Good day, Grade Tens. Welcome to this first lesson where we are actually going to be doing the revision for the final exams. So no more learning of new work, no more covering new work. What we're going to be doing is just revising what we already know. So let's get started straight away with going through a couple of exam examples. The first question says a truck is traveling at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second when a driver sees a child 50 meters ahead of him in front of the road okay so he sees the yeah is okay let me see where's my where's my there it is yeah is the road here is the truck Okay, and there's the front of the track. I know it's a terrible drawing. Okay, right, and it says the track is traveling at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second. The track driver then sees a little child who is 50 meters in front of him. He hits the brakes and the track accelerates at a negative 1,25 meters per second squared. But it took 0.5 seconds, 0.5 seconds to actually hit the brakes. That was his reaction time. Will the truck hit the child? Okay, so what we really need to know is if it took us 0.5 seconds to actually hit the brakes, then obviously we'll have traveled some distance, right? And then during that time, um, and then after that, we hit the brakes. And we want to know how long it takes for that to stop. Because obviously during the time that we were traveling, we were still traveling at a constant velocity of 10. So we traveled some meters during that time. Okay, so during the reaction time, during the reaction time, do you agree? We had an initial velocity of 10 meters per second and we've got a final velocity of 10 meters per second because we're not doing anything we're going oh, but we're not hitting the brakes or anything okay the acceleration is zero the time is 0, 0,5 seconds okay there's half a second and we want to know how far the track had gone before it starts well before the driver started hit the, hitting the brakes okay so we have got vf is equal to VI plus A delta T. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. Delta X equals VI delta T plus a half delta T squared. And delta X is equal to VI plus VF over 2 delta T. Okay, so what have we got? We've got VI and VF. And delta C, we want delta X. So we want an equation that's got delta X in. All three, these three equations of delta X in. We've got the time, we've got the initial velocity, the final velocity, and we want delta X. Why don't we just use this? So we've got that delta X is equal to the initial velocity, which is 10, plus the final velocity, which is 10, divided by 2, multiplied by the change in time, which is 0,5 which is going to be 10 times 0, 0,5, which equals five meters. So he's already traveled five meters. So what's he got left to stop? He's still got 45 meters left, otherwise he hits the child. Okay, now what we need to do is work out how long it takes him, what distance he travels while he's breaking. So again, our initial velocity we know is 10. Our final velocity is zero. The acceleration is negative 1,25 because he's slowing down. And we also know that his delta T is zero. And we want delta X, not delta T, zero. He is Sorry, why did I say delta T is zero? Um, we don't know his reaction, his, his delta T. Hang on a minute, let me just think what I was thinking. I know I was thinking that these reaction times have already been accounted for. Um, yeah, okay. So his delta X is equal to, what is it equal to? It's going to be 45 meters, but we don't actually know that. We want to know what the delta X is. So we want delta X. We've got VI, VF, and A. VI, VA, and a VF, and A. And we want DX. So yeah, we've got, there we go. This is the equation we want. Okay, so we're going to go VF squared minus VI squared 
over 2 times by a is equal to delta x. So therefore, the final velocity is 0 minus the initial velocity, which is 10, all squared, over 2 times by the initial velocity, which is negative 10, okay, is equal to your delta x. So that's minus 100 over minus 20 is equal to delta x. So therefore, we can cancel that with that, and the 2 with the 10 to give you a 5. Therefore, delta x is equal to 5. Okay. So then, let me check if I'm right. The final velocity minus initial velocity is 0 minus 100 over minus 2 times. Why is that 10? I'm going mad. No wonder. That acceleration is not 10. The acceleration we worked out well, what was given as 1.25. So I don't quite know what I was thinking there. Sorry, let me just fix this. This is going to be minus 1,25, which is going to, like I said, going to be negative 10 over. And now we need to multiply that. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry 1, 2, 2 is a 4, 5. Um, 2, 1 is a 2. So it is minus 2,50. We cancel that to get our delta x, which is 10 divided by 2.5. 10, let's clear it out. 10 divided by 2.5 equals 4. Therefore, delta x is equal to 4. Right, so now... Are we going to hit the child? No, we're not, because the total distance we've traveled was the 5 meters plus the 4 meters, which is 9 meters, which is much smaller than the allotted 45 meters. Right, now let's do something completely different, okay? We're now going to look at some energy diagrams, and we're going to look at energy diagrams that are to do with gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, all of those things, okay? So let's get going. It says a steel ball of mass 5 kilograms is rolling over a frictionless surface, as shown below. When the ball reaches point A, it has a mechanical energy of 250 joules. The sketch is not drawn to scale. Okay, fine. So A has, at A, the ball, which has a mass of 5 kgs, has an energy of 250 kilojoules. It loses some of that energy as it goes up, so therefore it can only gain a new height of 5 meters. And then it goes down and comes back up and obviously cannot attain the 7 meters. So therefore, it's going to stop, and it's actually going to stop somewhere along here, where that's going to be E. Right, it says, state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy in words. First of all, the mechanical energy, the conservation of mechanical energy in words, is that mechanical energy is saved, and always, mechanical energy is always conserved, and always, always, that you cannot just re um, just for fun, just remove the energy and everything else. Every balance, every equation has to be balanced. And what's important is that for energy, the energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. Now it says, state the principle of conservation. Okay, we've done that. Now it says, use your knowledge of principle of conservation of energy and mechanical and to write down the kinetic energy of the steel ball at B. It says, write down the kinetic energy. So do you agree that all the kinetic, all the potential energy the ball has at B is gained, oh, write down the kinetic energy. The ball is, is rolling over friction at ash and when the ball reaches to A, its mechanical energy is 250 joules. So we are told that its mechanical energy is 250 joules. But we know that EMEC equals EP plus EK. The EMEC is equal to 250 joules. The EMEC is MGH plus a half MV squared. Okay, right, we've got 250 
we've got the mass, we've got the gravity. So we can go 250 is equal to mg h plus a half m cubed. So that's 250 divided by a lot of numbers, mg is equal to n over 2, which is going to be 3. No, it's not because they're different. So let me just erase this. So it's going to be um, what is it? It is it says right down the kinetic energy of the steel ball. So should it should be easier if it just says right down our calculator. Oh, I didn't see we had the height. Oh, I'm an idiot. I did not see that we had the height. Okay, so let's try again. It says, yeah, that they want mechanical energy in mech at point A, but we've got this height here, which is five meters. Okay, and we know that it was coming from above this point. And there we go. So now, and we also, as far as concerned, there's no friction, so all other mechanical energy is converted into kinetic energy potential energy for B. Now, do you agree that A is at the same height as B? So therefore, E total, E mech, is going to be E um, potential energy plus E kinetic energy plus E the electrical energy. Okay, right or whatever. So now, do you agree that EMEC, they said, is conserved? So we know that that's actually 80, no, what is that? That is, we know it's conserved, right? Um, and they say that the energy is 250 joules, just 250 joules. So that's 250 joules. Now, the potential energy at A is also going to be MGH. Then we've got the kinetic energy at B. Then we've got the potential energy at C. And then finally, we've got kinetic energy at, at this point here with no meter, and possibly potential energy at D if it reaches. So the total energy in MEC is 250. There is a potential energy. It's five times the mass of the object. Um, mass the object, which is five, times by the height, which is nine comma eight, plus a half m mass the object, which is um, nine point. I don't know. I'm getting this five squared. Okay, so therefore we've got 250 is equal to 25 times by 9 comma 8 plus a half times by 25 m which is 250 which is equal to and then this 25 times 9.8 is what? We have got 25 times 9.8 is equal to 245, 245 plus 22,5 m. Okay, so then do you agree that that's 5 is equal to 225? What is she sending to me? Sorry, it seems like Gladys is sending something to me, but I don't know what it is. And I can't see. 225, um, 22,5 M. I'm seeing writing Gladys. I don't know what you're talking about. So if we divide both sides by 22,5, we can find the mass of the object. Okay. We don't need to find the mass. Sorry, I'm getting mad. Just a second. I'm just getting a little bit confused because I'm not 100% sure why I had a comment. 
It's very weird. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, sorry guys. It says right in the it just says right in the kinetic energy of the steel ball. Okay, they tell us that we've got 250 joules here. The 250 joules is made up of kinetic energy plus potential energy. Do you agree? The potential energy at this point is MGH, which is going to be the mass of the object, which is five, the mass, the height, which is five, times by the 9.8 the gravity, plus K is going to give us a 250. So therefore, we've got 25 times 9.8. So if we do that, um, 25 times 9.8, that is 245. So, and if we times by 10, which was the IB reading, then we get that K is zero. So we can say therefore that since the ball is released at A, but it says when it reaches A, it's got a mechanical energy. So it has zero kinetic energy, zero kinetic energy at A. Okay, because 250, yeah, mechanical energy 250 is equal to potential energy plus its kinetic energy. And you can see that when it reaches A, it does, has no kinetic energy because the potential energy is 5 times by its mass times by its height of 10. Oh, times by its height. No. No, G, 9.8, which is 10, is 0, so therefore K equals 0. So therefore, the answer to this is 0. Oh, yes. yes. If, if we were looking, and that is if we were looking at the kinetic energy at A, but since it, it has 0 kinetic energy at A, a, that means that all its kinetic energy must be converted, all its potential energy must be converted to kinetic energy. So therefore the kinetic energy at B is going to be all of that energy, which is 250 joules. Do you understand that? And there's no energy difference. Now it says calculate the speed of the ball as it reaches point C. Okay, so now we want it reach what it reaches at point C. So we know that all of this mechanical energy, 250, has to be converted to this kinetic energy of five at five meters, okay? So, I mean, to the potential energy it has at five meters. And if there's any leftover, then it will have some speed. So we know again that EMEC at the bottom has to equal EMEC at the top. The EMEC at the bottom is going to be 250 joules, which is equal to the EMEC at the top plus the EK, right? Um, so the EMEC at the top is going to be MGH plus a half MV squared. So the mass of this is going to be 5 times by 10 times by the height 5 plus a half times by 5 V squared. That cancels that to give you a zero. Therefore, the velocity at C is equal to zero. So that velocity there is zero as well. Now it says determine whether the mechanical energy acquired by the ball at point A will be enough to carry the ball over D show all calculations. Okay, so I don't really need to show calculations because I know that all the potential energy here or all mechanical energy has converted into kinetic energy here, which means that all the mechanical energy here is going to be converted into potential energy there, which is five meters high, which means that when it gets over here, it's going to stop. It's not actually going to reach D because all its mechanical energy being converted into kinetic energy, which is then back converted into potential energy, means that it only reaches five meters. Right, now let's look at the next question. Um, just a second, I just want to see something.
Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. Right, it says an object of mass 0.2 kgs, so this has a mass of 0.2 kgs, is released at point A and moves along a frictionless surface AC and a track, a curved track. Along section CD, it experiences friction and stops at point D. So over here, there is friction. Okay, the highest point, uh, a vertical point of, of, at point A above point, the point X is 0.8 meters. So in other words, the highest height it has, the biggest height it has, is 0.8 meters, right? Right down in words, the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is conserved in an isolated system. That's it. So calculate the gravitational potential energy of the object at point A just before it is released. Okay, so they want the gravitational potential energy of the object just before it's released, so we don't have to worry about kinetic energy. So do you agree that EP, or you guys might know it as U, is equal to him, her, the okay, K, which is the mass of the object, which is 0, 0,2, the acceleration due to gravity, which I'm going to use is 9.8, and the height, which is 0, 0,8. Right. Now that we know that that is a potential energy, we now need to actually calculate it. So let's get out our calculator and do that. <sighs> okay, let me just get rid of this thing here. Okay, so if we do that and we multiply it now, we've got 0.2 times 9.8 times 0.8 equals 1,57. So now it's 1,57 joules. Okay, so the gravitational potential of the object just before it's released is 1,57 joules. So it's at point B, the speed um, of the object is 3 meters. Okay, so it's gained kinetic energy. Use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the vertical height of the point B above the ground. Okay, so do you agree that it has gained potential energy? Okay, it's gained um, the potential to move. All right, now it says use the principle of conservation to calculate the vertical height at point B above the ground. Okay, so what we are saying is now that at point B, EP plus EK at B has to equal EP plus EK at, say, C. Okay, so the total potential energy at, no, let's make it A, just make it a lot easier, erase it. Um, oh, sorry. Um, here we go. So let's make that at EP plus EK at KA. Okay. Right. So now what are we saying? We're saying EP, potential energy at B, which we don't know because that's the whole point of this. Um, potential energy it says at point b the speed is three meters and okay right so we don't know the potential energy um so it's going to be mgh plus the kinetic energy which is a half the mass of the ball which is 0, 0,2 kgs um v is the velocity it was traveling at initially um V. Three. Squared is equal to the mass, which is 0 0.2 times 9.8 times the height. Um, and that's what we're trying to find out. Plus, do we have any kinetic energy? It says at point B, the speed of use the principle of conservation to calculate the vertical height of point B above the ground. Um, okay, plus, I'm sorry, we're working out, I 
can't see what this is now. We're working out. This is going to be 0, 0,8 plus 0. Okay, so let us square this out and sort it out, and let's make that all neat and then solve for this height here. Um, so we can say the mass of the thing was 0, 0, 2. The height of it was um, point B. Which is what we're trying to find out. The second nine comma eight, and we're trying to find her. Um, plus, let's put that in the calculator. So we got 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 times 3 squared equals 0 0.9H. Um, just the second grade tens. I don't know what's going on. It says that I've lost you. So I'm going to try and fix this. Just wait. Um, 